Hello and welcome to a brand new video. But today we're down here in the lovely sunny Portsmouth. Now if you saw my last video where we took a walk down South Sea, well, I'm going to continue that walk all the way through the historic city of Portsmouth and I'm going to show you all that it has to offer down there, including the historic dockyards and the Gun Wharf Keys as well. So let's head down there. Come on then. Okay, so our first port of call is what is known as the Long Curtain Moat and Battery. Now this was opened in the 1600s and it's basically a harbour defence for Portsmouth. So it was what they would have used as a fort to defend against the French as we were talking about in the South Sea video with the various forts further up the coast. So we're making our way down towards historic Portsmouth and you can just see Gosport over there in the distance and how aqua that sea is. We're going to continue along the moat here and down towards what is known as the battery. Now this battery has tunnels which lead up into Portsmouth and up to uh, a pub. I think Admiral Lord Nelson had a secret tunnel, that's what I'm told anyway. It was discovered by two brothers from Portsmouth and they uh, stumbled across this tunnel when they were putting in a lamppost on the street, so I'm told. So we're just going to make our way down here now and I'm going to show you the statue of uh, Admiral Lord Nelson, the uh, one of the most famous men in Portsmouth. You can also see the ruins of uh, a church just over there on the right. So here he is, the man himself, as you'll see popping up in various locations throughout Portsmouth. Standing proud, looking over the harbour area. So this is what is known as the, the battery and like I said it was opened in the 1600s and it's part of the same defence as the moat. And you can also just see a Victoria Pier down there which was uh, built for craft and uh, mooring uh, ships now used for fishing. But we're still making our way along the, uh, the defences here and we're heading down towards the round tower which you'll see in the distance there. Just take a look on the right here at some of the buildings in what I would call Old Portsmouth. Now these are modern buildings, or so they look anyway, but they fit in well with the area. It's quite a nice little street down there. Now look at that beach there, nice little hidden beach just next to the round tower. And again with views across to Gosport over there. Now when I get up here I'm just going to pan you over to the right so you can see some of the uh, styles of the buildings on the old streets of Portsmouth down there. Now like I said some of these are new and some of them are fairly old so it's hard to distinguish. But they all fit in very well. Now down there it appears that they've made use of some of this courtyard area. It's now got a lot of uh, restaurants and bars and eateries and very nice places for you to hang out. 
We've made a really li nice courtyard out of that. We're now going to head into what is known as the Round Tower. Like I said, we're going to go inside. It's actually free entry again, like most things in Portsmouth. Just look at the uh, brickwork in here, how nice it is. Now this Round Tower was built in 1418 by King Henry V. And it was again to defend Portsmouth Harbour from the French. Because back then, that's all they were worried about, was the invasion of the French. None of these uh, other forces back then. You can just see some of the bars and restaurants just down there again. And lots of places for the kids to come and climb around, and nice tunnels and things. And I'm going to make my way through here, and up onto the round tower at the top, so we can get a nice view. But again, you can see across the Gosport over there. You can catch a ferry across there, if you need to. Let's go inside. And up these stairs here. Oh. Cheers. Social distancing. Okay, so now we're at the top of the round tower. And just check out that view. All the way back down there to uh, Clarence Pier in the distance. You can see the Isle of Wight just over there. And then you've got Gosport on the right hand side there and all their ports. And all the way round and into Portsmouth Harbour. Okay, so let's make our way back out so you can just see the round tower again to the right up there. Some nice little bistros down here. And we're going to head out this little doorway at the back here. And we're going to start making our way down into what is known as Old Portsmouth. Now what we're going to do before we head into Portsmouth in the dock area, we're going to head down to what is known as Spice Island. Now Spice Island is exactly that, it's a small island that jets out in front of the harbour of Portsmouth. Again, across the Gosport there, just look how aqua that sea is. So I'm going to speed up this walk for you because it's quite a long walk down to Spice Island. But just check out some of these buildings and how beautiful they are, especially with the sunshine on them. And that nice little modern one there in front fits in really well. I love the colours down here. That one almost looks Greek with the colours. Okay, so here we are on Spice Island, and you can see the pub named after it there. Very popular today with the weather. You can see straight across into Portsmouth Harbour. We will head very shortly. So we're going to head back up the island and then out towards the harbour. Now just check out the view towards the Spinnaker Tower there. Off this headland. Okay, so we're making our long walk back down Spice Island and round towards Gunwharf Keys. Now just check out the uh, old rails in the road there, the old tram rails to uh, obviously back in the day to ferry goods in and out of the port here. Like I said, any of the spices from around the world would have come in at this point here, hence the name Spice Island. Okay, so I'm going to leave you to enjoy the fast walk up here. And then I'll see you a bit further up at Gunwolf Keys. Okay, so we've just taken a little shortcut across towards Gunwharf Keys now. And as you can see, when we get over here, the buildings are a lot more modern. Very nice, I must say. I love the colours. 
and this is what is known as gun wharf keys or the plaza now what I need to do is take a walk through gun wharf keys to show you the modern development down there and all the old historic stuff as well but as you can see there is a massive massive queue right ahead there to get in now I'm presuming this is due to coronavirus just to uh, keep the shoppers down to a minimum so uh, I better go join the queue we'll just take a look at those beautiful buildings now that is known as the lipstick tower as far as I know it's apartment blocks in there looks like a lipstick on its side and it lights up red at the top lots of uh, bars again and restaurants around here I okay so I've just queued up in that took me about 40 minutes to get through but we're here so let's head up through Gun Wharf Keys and I'll show you some of the sights further down Okay, so just coming up on our right here is what is known as the Old Customs House. So this is one of the only original buildings remaining of Gun Wharf Keys. And they've nicely incorporated it into the modern development there. But now a popular bar. And you can see one of the old uh, dock cranes here. Now this is Gun Wharf Keys, which is a shopping district now. It was built in 2001. And uh, it's a premium designer outlet. It was meant to accompany the Spinnaker Tower, so it's supposed to open at the same time, but I'll tell you more about that when we get down there. You can see the original docks here. Now again, all these would have been filled with warehouses and loading and unloading platforms. And we've got a nice uh, bust from a ship here. There's quite a few of these around this area, which is good to see they've kept them. And this one is from the HMS Vernon. Okay, so let's head further down. You can see the uh, lovely modern marina here. Some nice yachts in there. And there's some lovely restaurants and bars on the right hand side here. I'm loving how modern this building is. But also very respectful to the original history here. Okay, so we're heading down towards the Spinnaker Tower. Which is over 560 feet high right to the top there and there's a viewing platform and there's actually three levels at the top there that you can go up now the Spinnaker Tower used to have a glass lift on the outside of the tower that went up and down but due to technical issues they actually decommissioned it quite a few years back now and it's not in use anymore unfortunately So here we are at the bottom of the Spinnaker Tower. Like I said, this was due to open in 2000 for the millennium, but it actually opened in 2005 due to delays. So we're just going to take a shortcut through the Gun Wharf Shopping Centre. As you can see, very busy, so I'm making my way hastily through there and out the other side. So we're going to head down towards what is known as the Portsmouth Harbour Station and then onwards towards where the uh, Naval Museum is as well. So straight out here and the station is just to the left down here. 
Also on the right hand side there you've got the bus station. Just listen to those trains as they clonk along the pier here. Okay, so we've left Gunwharf Keys and we're around here now at the Portsmouth Harbour Station. Now this station is very unique because it's all built on a wooden pier. The whole station jets out on a wooden pier. Now it was built back in the day to uh, accompany the ferries which would have gone across to Gosport and the Isle of Wight from here. So it opened in 1876 and it was at a train and ferry terminal. Now just look at that pier, it's all modern now, I think they've modernised it with steel, but it was made out of wood. In fact, you can, when the trains go on the pier, you can hear it all rattling. It's very unique that, especially remaining and still in use today. And then just over there, we have the HMS Warrior, which is part of the Portsmouth Naval Museum, which we'll head over shortly and I'll show you the entrance to that. So that uh, HMS Warrior, was uh, built in 1860 and it was a Royal Navy ship. So we're making our way around towards the Naval Museum. Now the museum holds many of the famous ships, the historic ships. You've got the HMS Victory which was launched in 1765 and it was Lord Nelson's flagship and it was involved in the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. And then more famously than that you've got the Mary Rose which is from 1511 and it served 33 years in service built for Henry VIII and it sunk in 1545 they managed to raise it in 18 sorry 1982 just off the coast of the South Sea Castle which you'd see in my previous video but we're making our way down towards the entrance to the museum now unfortunately we can't go in because it's pre-bookable only and it's actually sold out so we can't see the uh, Victory or the Mary Rose, but we can see the HMS Warrior there, right in front of us. Yeah, Portsmouth's notable for having some famous residents as well, ranging from people like Peter Sellers, Rudyard Kipling, H.G. Wells, Arthur Conan Doyle, and our very famous man, Isambard Kingdom Brunel, and then not forgetting Charles Dickens. Okay, so you can just see inside the Naval Museum here. Like I said, it's sold out today. There's a lot of naval history in there. If you fancy a day out, it's well worth a trip. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed our little uh, brief walk through Portsmouth there and some of the beautiful buildings down on the dockside. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little trip through Portsmouth there and what a beautiful city it really is. So we've just finished up here now, right next to the, the dockside and the uh, Gunwharf Keys as well. But if you like the video, please give the video a like. If you've got any comments, please put them down below. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, then please subscribe to the channel. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you in the next video. So bye for now.